O holy friend, have mercy on us. O Lord God of hosts, be with us, for we have no helper in our hardships and tribulations but you. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In Christ Jesus our Lord. I have sinned. Forgive me. Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life, the Pantocrator, the Lord, our God. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything, concerning everything and in everything, for you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. God, may have mercy and compassion on us, hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of his saints for that which is good in our behalf at all, all times, and to keep the life of and standing of our honored father, the arch, archpriest, Pope Abba Tawadros, and his partner in the liturgy, our father, Abba Yusuf, and that for that for that which is good in our behalf at all times, and forgive us our words. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life, in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men, and the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people and from this church and from this your holy place. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. Lord have mercy, we worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Holy and Coessential Trinity, hail to the Church, the House of the Angels, hail to the Virgin who gave birth to our Savior, hail to you.
to the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hail to you, O Martha. Hail to the evangelist. Hail to the apostle Saint Mark, the beholder of God. We ask you, O Son of God, to keep the life of our faith. Patriarchal Baba to others, the archpriest, confirm him on his throne, and his partner in the liturgy, he our holy and righteous, father of all you said, the bishop, confirm him on his throne, through the intercessions of the theosophical saints. forgiveness of our sins that we may praise you who with your good good father and the holy spirit for you have risen and saved us have mercy on us let us pray stand up for prayer peace be with Goodness, lover of mankind, remember, O Lord, the servant who hath fallen asleep, our Father, our and our brethren. Pray for our fallen brethren who have fallen asleep and repose in the faith of Christ since the beginning. Our holy fathers, the archbishops, our fathers, the bishops, our fathers, the hegemons, our fathers, the priests, our brethren, the deacons, our fathers, the monks, and our fathers, the laymen. And for the full repose of Christians, that Christ our God may repose all their souls in the paradise of joy. And we too afford mercy unto us and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Graciously, O Lord, repose all our souls in the bosom of our Holy Father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sustain them in the green pasture beside the still water in the paradise of joy, the place out of which griefs are growing have fled away in the light of your sin. Raid up their bodies all from the day which have appointed according to your true promises which are without lie. Grant them the good things of your promises that which an eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have a come upon the heart of them. And the things which you, God, have prepared for those who love your holy name. For there is no death for your servant but a departure, even if any neglect or headlessness has overtaken them since we're clothed in flesh and dwelled in this world. Oh, God has a good and love of mankind. Graciously, O Lord, repose and forgive them, the your servant, the Orthodox Christian, who are in the whole world, from the east to the west, and from the north to the south, each one according to his name, and each one according to her name. For there is no one pure without blemish, even though his life on earth be a single day. As for those, O Lord, those souls who have taken report them, and may they be worthy the kingdom of the heaven. As for us too, O Lord, grant us the Christian perfection that would be pleading to you, and give them an us a share <coughs> an inheritance with all your sins. Lord, have mercy. Graciously accord, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and exceedingly blessed and glorified be your name forever. Amen. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according to our hope in you. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, in the hope of all the regions of the earth. 
And you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, make me understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You have been my refuge from generation to generation. I ask the Lord instead, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will. For you are my God, and with you is the fountain of life. In your life shall we see light. Let your mercy come unto those who know you. And your righteousness unto the upright in heart. To you belongs blessing, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now and forever and ever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praise unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your mercy every morning and your righteousness every night. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who is born of the Virgin, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who is crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who rose from the dead and ascends to the heavens, have mercy upon us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, forgive us our sins. O Lord, forgive us our iniquities. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O Lord, visit the sake of your people. Heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep, O Lord, oppose their souls. O you are without sin, Lord, have mercy on us. O you are without sin, Lord, help us and receive our supplications. For yours is the glory, the dominion, and triple holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. O Lord, make words to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hail to you. We ask you, O saint full of glory, the ever-virgin, the Theotokos, the mother of Christ, lift up our prayers unto your beloved Son, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to the Holy Virgin, who has brought forth unto us the true light, Christ our God. Ask the Lord on our behalf that he may have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins. O Virgin Mary, the Holy Theotokos, the faithful advocate for all mankind, intercede on our behalf before Christ whom you bore, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to you, O Virgin, the bright and true Queen. of Mary in the highest heaven at the right hand of her beloved entreating him on our behalf as David has said in the book of Psalms the queen stood at your right hand O king Solomon has called her song of songs my sister and my spouse my true city jerusalem for he has given a symbol of her in many high names saying come out of your garden O choicest aroma hail to you O virgin the true queen hail to the pride of our race who bore to us emmanuel we ask you to remember us our faithful advocate before our lord jesus 
Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. Michael, head of the heavenly, he is the first among the angelic ranks, serving before the Lord. God sends unto us his mercy and compassions through the supplications of Michael, the great archangel. The harvest is perfected through the prayers of Michael, for he is close to God, asking him on our behalf. All good honor and every perfect gift comes to us from on high, from the Father of lights. Let us praise and glorify and worship the Holy Trinity, one in essence who abides forever. Intercede on our behalf, O holy archangel, Michael, head of the heavenly, that he may forgive us our sins. Seven archangels praising as they stand before the Pantocrator, serving the hidden mystery. Michael is the first, Gabriel is the second, Raphael is the third, a symbol of the Trinity. Soriel, Sadakiel, Sarathiel, and Ananio, the great and holy luminaries, entreating him on our behalf. The cherubim and the seraphim, the thrones, dominions, and powers, the four incorporeal creatures, carrying the thrones. Of God. The twenty-four presbyters in the church of the firstborn, praising him without ceasing, proclaiming and saying, Holy God, heal the sick, holy mighty, O Lord, repose those who are asleep. Holy bless your inheritance. May your mercy and peace be a fortress to your people. Holy, 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 O Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. And when they say alleluia, the heavenly response saying, Holy Amen, Alleluia, glory be to our God. Intercede on our behalf, O angelic armies and heavenly orders, that he may forgive us our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ has chosen his apostles, Peter and Andrew, John and James, and the rest, Philip and Matthew, Bartholomew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Canaanite, Thaddeus and Matthias, Paul, Mark, and Luke, and the rest of the disciples who followed our Savior. Matthias, who was chosen in place of Judas, all of them and the rest followed the Master. Their voices went forth throughout the face of the whole earth, and their words have reached the ends of the world. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, O my lords and fathers, the apostle, 
Send the seventy two disciples that he may forgive us our sins. Oh, mark the apostle and the evangelist, the witness of the passion of the only begotten God. You have come and enlightened us through your gospel and as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You brought us out of darkness into the true light, feeding us the bread of life that came down from heaven. All the tribes of the earth were blessed through you, and your words have reached the ends of the world. Hail to you, O martyr, hail to the evangelist, hail to the apostle, mark the beholder of God. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, O beholder of God, the evangelist. Mark the apostle that he may forgive our sins. You received the grace of Moses, the priesthood of Melchizedek. You received honor from our father Peter, the first of the apostles. Christ lifted his right hand on your head. He gave you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. As Paul that you may govern over the church, and that you may shepherd your people in purity and righteousness. As Paul the apostle has said, likewise as Aaron, Christ is also. Likewise we magnify you with David the psalmist. You are the priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Pray to the Lord on our behalf of my father and father the patriarch, our holy father of Atawadrus, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our holy righteous father of Yusuf the bishop, that he may forgive us our sins. Watch over us from on high where you dwell. O Lady of us all, the ever-Virgin Theotokos, ask of him whom you have borne, our good Savior, to take away our troubles and grant us his peace. Hail to you, O Virgin, the right and true Queen. Hail to the pride of our race who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, so our faithful advocate before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. We exalt you, the mother of the true light. We glorify you, O Saint the Theotokos, for you have brought forth unto us the Savior of the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory be to you, our Master, our King, Christ, the pride of the apostles, the crown of the martyrs, the joy of the righteous, the firmness of the churches, the forgiveness of sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. We worship him and we glorify him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Fons Creator creator of heaven and earth and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, ascended into the heavens. He sits at the right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Yes, who believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we confess one baptism for the remission of sins. 
Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O oh, Master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who said to his saintly honored disciples and holy apostles, many prophets and righteous men, have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. May we be worthy to hear and to act according to your holy gospels, through the prayers of your sins. Pray for the Holy Gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also our Master, all those who have been at us to remember them in our supplications and prayers which we offer up unto you. O oh, oh Lord, our God, those who have already fallen asleep, repose them. Those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all 
and the resurrection of us all. The Psalm of David say, Alleluia. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord who walks in his ways. The Lord bless you out of Zion and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life, Alleluia. Stand in the fear of God, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord of hosts. Bless, O Lord, a reading from the Holy Gospel. According to St. Luke, the evangelist and pure disciples, may his holy blessings be with us all. Our Lord God, Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? So he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, Make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they dreaded it him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, 
but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. And it's, it is easy, easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. Glory be to God for ever. Let us worship our Savior, the good one and lover of mankind, for he had compassion on and has come and saved us. Intercede on our behalf, O Lady of us all, the Theotokos, Mary, the mother of our Savior, that he may forgive us our sins. Intercede on our behalf, O Holy Archangel, Michael, head of the heavenly, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our Holy Father, the Patriarch, Pope of Atawadros, the Archpriest, that he may forgive us our sins. Pray to the Lord on our behalf, our holy and righteous Father of Yusuf, the bishop, that he may forgive us our sins. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the perfect Trinity. We worship him and glorify him. Let us pray. Stand up for prayer. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Again, let us ask God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord. God and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one only holy Catholic and Apostle. Church. Pray for the peace of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. Lord, have mercy. Church, which exists from one end of the world to the other end. Remember, O Lord, our honor, Father, the Archpriest, Pope Abba Tawadru II, and his part in an apostolic liturgy, our Bishop Abba Yusuf. Pray for our Archpriest, Pope Abba Tawadru II, Pope and Patriarch and Archbishop of the Great City of Alexandria, and his spiritual brother in the Apostolic Liturgy, the Patriarch of Antioch, Marcus Ephraim II, and the Patriarch of Eritrea, Bruno Antonius I, and as part of the Apostolic Liturgy, our Father, the Bishop of Yusuf, and for Orthodox bishops. Lord, Lord have mercy. Keep them secure for us for many years and peaceful time. Remember, O Lord, the salvation of this your holy place and every place and every monastery of our Orthodox is Father's. Pray for the salvation of the world and of this city of ours of, and of all cities, district, islands, and monasteries. Lord, have mercy. And every city. 
city and every country and the village and all their adornment and save us from the famine plague earthquake drowning fire captivity for Benin and the sword of the stranger and the raising up of the heritage Lord have mercy mercy O Lord O Lord tear into the waters of the river this year to bless them pray for the rising of the water of the rivers this year that Christ our God may bless them and raise them to, according to their measure, that he may give joy to the face of the earth, sustain us, the sons of men, save the cattle, and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Raise them to their measure according to your grace. Give joy to the face of the earth. May its furrows be abundantly watered and its fruits be plentiful. Preparing for sowing and harvesting, manage our life as deemed fit. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness for the sake of the poor of your people, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of all of us who entreat you and seek your holy name. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness, O you who give food to all flesh. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness, that we too, having sufficiency in everything, always may abound in every good deed. Lord, have mercy. Again. Let us ask God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, our assembly. Is this holy church and for our assemblies. Lord have mercy. Grant that they may be to us without obstacle or hindrance, that we may hold them according to your holy and blessed will. Houses of prayers, houses of purity, houses of blessings, grant them to us, O Lord, and to your servants who will come after us forever. Arise, O Lord the God, let all your enemies be scattered, and let all who hate your holy name flee before your face. But let your people be in blessing, thousand of thousand, and ten thousand times ten thousand, doing your will, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, bow your heads to the Lord. Before you, O Lord, let us attend in the fear of God. Amen. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son and Logos of God the Father, who have broken every bond of our sins through his life-giving sufferings, who breathed in the face of his holy disciples and sent to apostles and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. They also now are master. Through your holy apostles have given grace to those for a time labor in the priesthood in your holy church to forgive sins upon the earth and to bind and to lose bond of iniquities. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, for your servant, those who bow their heads before your holy glory, dispense unto us your mercy. Close every bond of our iniquities, if we have committed any sin against you, no longer unknown, strong, far, or in deed, or in word, or from faint heartedness. O Master, who knows the weakness of men, as a good one, a lover of mankind, O God, grant us and forgives our sins. Bless us, absolve us, and all your people. Fill us with your fear, straighten us, and through goodwill. For you are our God, and glory, honor, dominion, and worship are due to you, together with good Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the age of the ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Please be seated.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Bible study tonight from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 5. Uh, in the first two chapters, chapter 1 and 2, from the Gospel of St. Luke, uh, St. Luke introduced his Gospel with a call to believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah from the announcement of Archangel Gabriel to Zechariah and then to Saint Mary, then the birth of John the Baptist and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. With all what happening with these events, so he introduced the gospel by proclaiming that Jesus is the promised Messiah. Then in chapter 3, repenting of sin is the first step in believing. So St. John the Baptist came preaching baptism of repentance. And in the last part of chapter 3, we see how Jesus came and be baptized from John the Baptist. And God the Father said about Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased. So Jesus here is anointed when the Holy Spirit descended upon his head like a dove or consecrated or set apart as God's suffering servant through his sacrificial death that will happen uh, at the end of his life. The word Messiah means the anointed one, the chrismated one, Christ, chrismated one. And if we ask when he was chrismated, when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and he was chrismated to be the king, to be the prophet with capital P, and to be, to be the uh, high priest. So he is the king of the kings. He is the prophet who revealed the love of God toward us. And he is the high priest. Then in chapter 4, we read about the temptation on the mountain. And we saw the first Adam. Adam and Eve, the sinful Adam, because of his disobedient, this disobedience, this entered into the world. But we see in chapter 4 how Jesus is completely obedient uh, son of God. And because of his obedience, he defeated Satan in every sphere of human life. Body when he told him, change the stone into uh, bread. Mind, when he tempted him by the kingdoms of the world. And spirit, when he king, uh, tempted him with vain glory and pride, when he told him, throw yourself from the pinnacle of the temple. And it's written, God will send his angels and carry you. And he defeated Satan by the word of God. So this showed his obedience to God the Father and to the word of God. Then in the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus started his ministry in the region of the Sea of Galilee. As we see in the last part from uh, gospel of St. Luke and the Lord will continue to serve in the region of Galilee until Luke chapter 9 verse 50. One of the cities in Galilee, Galilee like a big province, one of the city is the city of Nazareth where Jesus actually grew up and spent most of the first 30 years of his life. So when he went to his own city, he encountered unbelief and rejection to the extent 
they wanted actually to throw him uh, off the cliff to kill him and to get rid of him. So the Lord left Nazareth to another city also in Galilee, Capernaum, where he found belief, freedom, and he offered healing to many souls that were captives in Capernaum. Then this chapter, chapter 5, that we'll study today, first part, how he called his first disciples to follow him, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. But also, we will see how his ministry provoked the unbelieving hostility of the religious leaders when he announced forgiveness of sin to the paralytic man. And the last part of chapter 5, after Levi, the tax collector, responded to his calling and followed him and became St. Matthew, one of the four evangelists and one of the 12 uh, apostles, the Pharisees responded also in unbelief when the Lord Jesus Christ took dinner with the tax collectors and the publicans, the sinners. So the chapter outline from verse 1 to 5, Jesus calls Galilean fishermen to be his disciples. From verse 12 to 16, Jesus cleanses the leper. From 17 to 26, Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic. Then from 27 to 32, the call of Saint Matthew or Levi, the tax collector, and the last part from 33 to 39, the Lord Jesus Christ is questioned about fasting. Today, actually, we'll finish at verse 26. So, from verse 1 to 26 only. So, so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and he saw two boats standing by the lake but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ by now he established fame as a great teacher. And wherever he goes, he attracts crowd to listen to his preaching. So, if it were known that he intended speaking in public, a crowd of listeners would gather quickly around him. Whether he is preaching in synagogue, or by the lake shore, or in marketplace, or in houses, wherever he goes, he attracts crowds. St. Luke is the only evangelist who described this sea as sea, Lake of Gennesaret. Lake of Gennesaret is the same, the Sea of Galilee, is the same like the Sea of Tiberias or the Lake of Tiberias, all these are different names for the same sea or lake. Sea of Galilee, Lake of Gennesaret, or Lake of Tiberias. Gennesaret was a small city situated on the borders of Galilee, and the city of Tiberias lays on the west, western shore of it. Also, in the book of Numbers, chapter 34 and verse 11, we read about sea or lake under the name of Chinareth. Uh, Chinareth. It's the same Sea of Galilee. So now we know different names. Sea of Galilee, 
Tiberias, Gennesaret, or Shinoreth. All these are different names to the same sea or the same lake. Uh, John called it Tiberias in John chapter 6, verse 1. And it was the practice of the Galilean fishermen to fish at night and then to return to the shore at sunrise to unload the catch and to restore their nets. Verse 3, then he, Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him, to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So the Lord Jesus Christ asked Simon for the use of his boat as a platform from which to address the large crowd. In chapter 4, we read about how he healed Simon's mother-in-law chapter 4. So there was some connection and dealing, communication between the Lord Jesus Christ and between Simon Peter and his family. In the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, from verse 16 to 20, St. Mark provided the information that Simon and his brother Andrew were in the fishing business and were partners with Zebedee and his sons, James and John. So the people, the crowd, pressed so much upon the Lord Jesus Christ on the land. Why? Because they were so eager to hear the doctrine of life, to hear his teaching. So he couldn't conveniently speak to them. So he was obliged to get into one of the boats, having pushed a little out from the land, he taught them, and as was his custom, he used actually to sit down to teach as a sign of authority. Verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So after his teaching, knowing that the fishermen had caught nothing the night before, so the Lord Jesus Christ told them to lower their nets into the water and those fishermen did not realize that their failure of catching any fish the last night was actually with God's permission for the sake of their eternal and earthly success. So sometimes God may allow a temporary failure in order actually to experience his hand with us, and this will be a leap of faith in our spiritual life. And actually, if anybody else give them this advice to lower their nets for a catch, if it came from any ordinary person, the fishermen would have considered it offensive to their self-respect. They are experienced people. So they toiled all night, all night, and it is very unlikely, according to their experience, to catch any fish right now. But Peter was willing to trust the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to your word, I will cast the net for catch and to make the trial. As I told you in chapter 4, we read about the healing of his mother-in-law. So Peter now knows 
he is not speaking with a regular man or just an eloquent teacher. No, he is speaking with some divine power in this person. So they were experienced fishermen and new fishing was much better at night time and is almost non-existent at midday. They also knew that fishing is at shallow waters and not in the deep. But here Simon leaves completely his human experience to the experience of faith in the active word of God. According to your word, I will cast down the net. So this was a remarkable instance of faith. St. Ambrose goes on to declare that Simon Peter's struggle all night long and yet fruitlessly represent him who preaches eloquently in human wisdom and in human power, mere philosophy, and he will not catch anything because the people of God should preach in the power of the spirit, not in the power of human wisdom and philosophy. And to their surprise, as we read in verse 6, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. So the amount of fish they caught was so much beyond what was ever known to them. The net was breaking, which is strange because they did not lose their catch. Yes, the net was breaking, but they did not lose anything. And so many fish were caught to the extent that they called the other boat to help with the catch. The catch was too much to fill only one boat. And another evidence that the great, the, the fish they caught was very uh, big number, huge number, that they filled both the ships. And both of them were overloaded to the extent that both boats began to sink. What a great quantity of fish must there be to load or to overload both boats. In the same way, if we all are readily obey the Lord, we will be blessed in the same manner. Sincerely the Great comments on this tremendously big catch saying, their nets were filled with fish miraculously. This is to make the disciples confident that their preaching mission will not to be in vain when casting their nets on the unbelievers and lost people. But notice the inability of Simon and his colleagues in pulling the net. They stood in fear and shook silently. They waved to, to their brethren on the shore asking them for help. This means there were many who helped the saintly apostles in their field of missionary work. So St. Cyril said as they couldn't pull, uh, pull the, the, the net by themselves and signal to their partners, in the same way in, in missionary work, in ministry in general, we need to support one another to work as a team, not to work as individuals. Verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished 
at the catch of fish which they had taken. So Peter, at the beginning of the day, he heard the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. And definitely, the teaching of the Lord was very deep and piercing to the heart of Peter. So the conviction of sin started in his heart at the time of teaching. But now after he saw this miracle of catching so great number of fish, he fell down at the knees of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because now he saw the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. He worshipped him in amazement, wonder, and gratitude. He felt the presence of some divine power. He prostrated himself to earth, trembling and afraid. This reminds us with the same reaction of Isaiah when he came in the presence of the divine in Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 10. Then Peter, not knowing what to say, he said to the Lord, depart from me. This is an expression of humility, unworthiness. He felt unworthy to have Christ in his boat. So this was a result of being convinced that Jesus is not just a regular human being. He is a messenger from God. He is holy being. And Peter felt he is very unworthy to be in the presence of this holy one. He recognized the vast difference between his human condition as a sinner and the righteousness of the Holy One of God. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. John and James were in the other boat, and Peter and Andrew in the first boat. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. When Peter was trembling and prostrating in, in, in fear, at the custom of our Lord Jesus Christ, told him, do not be afraid. This word actually repeated several times in the scripture. Isaiah, when he realized that he is in the divine presence, the same word were uttered to him. To Daniel in chapter 10 verse 12. And several times during the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the last time was actually after his ascension. Uh, or just before his ascension. Uh, when he told the, the Lord, he told Peter, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be fisher of men. From now on, emphasize the end of Simon's old life and beginning of a new life as an apostle and a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ. Simon Peter. And he took the name Peter from the Lord Jesus Christ. In his commissioning, the Lord Jesus told Simon that the miracle of fish catch will be surpassed by Simon's catch of the lives of men and women for Christ's kingdom. Do you remember the first sermon after Pentecost? How many souls he caught by his net? 3,000. 3,000 in one sermon on the day of Pentecost. So this night of unproductive human work will be replaced by the fruitful work in proclaiming the word under the Lord's authority. Also, fishers of men is a prophetic symbol 
for proclaiming the gospel, the good news of salvation to everyone in the world. Simon's brother, Andrew, he's not named here, but was mentioned in Matthew, Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, and their partners, James, John, the sons of Zebedee, will now become partners in proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So these four persons left all and followed the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the beginning of Jesus' community of believers. The fishermen made the same choice Jesus asked each one of us to make, to be willing to leave everything and all things in our earthly life behind to follow him. Verse 12, now it happened when he was in a certain city that behold a man who was full of leprosy. St. Luke was a physician, so sometimes in describing diseases, he is very accurate as a physician. Was full of leprosy, which means the disease ate most of, of his flesh. So Jesus, and definitely heard about Jesus. So, and he fell on his face and implored him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. What a statement of faith. Then he put out, Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him. So, from the scene in the boat on the lake with the fishermen, now St. Luke is taking us to another memorable incident which took place probably soon after. Why memorable? Because it is the first recorded instance of Jesus' contact with that very terrible earthly disease, leprosy, very contagious disease, and lethal, fatal disease, illness. And this precise description, medical term, medical term, is peculiar and characteristic of St. Luke. When he said full of, implies the rapid development and horror of the disease. So this disease is spread in all his flesh. Also when he said the man was falling on his face in prostration, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he told him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. This is a very strong and confidence and deep humility. If you are willing. Then actually he's not demanding. As if he said, according to your will. I know my faith is you can make me clean, but I am leaving this decision to your will, if you are willing. We know from Leviticus chapter 13, verse 46, and Numbers chapter 5, verse 2, that the, you cannot touch man with leprosy. This will make you unclean, not only medically, but a ceremonial. That's why any man with leprosy used to cry, leper, leper. So the people actually will stay away from him. So touching the leper was distinct and clear violation of the letter of the commandment. But not, of course, violation of the spirit of the mosaic, mosaic law. Uh, and in order to prevent the accidental violation of this law, lepers, until the final stage of disease, were then secluded from all living contact with others. According to St. Ambrose, 
But Jesus, because he is the Lord of the law, does not obey the law, but makes the law. He is not under the law, because he is the maker of the law. He is God. He is the one who gave the law. But let us think why he touched the leper. This man was not only suffering from physical illness, but also he was suffering from psychological abandonment. Can you imagine for so many years, people stayed away from him, not talking to him, not touching him. So the Lord here want also to give him healing to his spirit and soul, not only to his body. By touching him, he is telling him, you are accepted, you are loved. Also, uh, by touching the leper, yet remaining clean, he did not get infected by this illness. So this is a symbol how he took his, our humanity upon him, but yet remaining undefiled. As we say in St. Gregory liturgy, he resembled us in everything except for sin alone. And immediately after this touch, the leprosy left him. The Lord was not polluted by the touch, but the leper was cleansed. Verse 14, and he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So this man did not obey. He went and made a report how the Lord healed him. So many people came around the Lord Jesus Christ, which hindered, in a way, his ministry there. That's why so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. So why did the Lord Jesus tell the cleansed leper not to tell anyone, but to go and show himself to a priest? Uh, number one, as St. Matthew explained in Matthew chapter 12 from verse 15 to 50, the Lord Jesus Christ did not wish his ministry to be accompanied by excitement and trouble from the religious leaders of the Jews. His hour did not yet come. That's why he wanted to build the kingdom of God. This was the first year of his ministry. So he didn't want trouble from the first year of ministry. And also second reason, he came not merely and not mainly to be a great physician and wonder worker, but he came to save our souls by his revelation, his example, and his death. Another reason, he wanted the man to be able to be readmitted to the community according to the law of Moses, which requires a priest to pronounce the man ritually clean and therefore now have admittance to the temple sacrifice. That's why he told him, go and show yourself to the priest. Also, it's evident now that the wish of our Lord Jesus Christ and his command was neglected. Maybe because feeling of gratitude. So this man went and told everybody. And what was the result of this? 
that his work of teaching was hindered by crowd who restored to him to be healed because he perceived him just as a physician with extraordinary power. But as we said, he had greater and more important mission before him than to just relieve the suffering from their physical illness. So he withdrew himself and spent short time in solitude and prayer. And the addition was praying. It is very peculiar to St. Luke in his gospel. So St. Luke in his gospel stressed the fact or this feature in our Lord's life that he spent time in prayer. And many parables about prayers are written in the gospel of St. Verse 17, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee until now his ministry in Galilee. Just to remind you the geography, uh, Israel was divided into three parts. In the south, Judea. In the north, Galilee. In the middle, Samaria. So the Lord was still preaching in Galilee, around the Sea of Galilee, city of, of Capernaum, uh, Ganesaret. All these are in Galilee. So people came out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. So some people come from Judea travel to the north. Some people from Jerusalem travel to the north. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So again, the theme of the new teacher had spread rapidly. One day after he healed the leper, the master was sitting in a house in Capernaum. And as usual, he was teaching. So this time, a different group of people actually gathered around him, not the fishermen or the traders of uh, Capernaum, this lake city. But there were prominent religious leaders who came from Jerusalem and Judea, so they were not from Galilee. And some from other Judean cities like Hebron and teachers of the law. So this was a different audience, not the simple people of Galilee. Some of them came out of curiosity. Some because of higher motives to hear for themselves teaching of this new uh, famous uh, Nazarene carpenter. And until now, we cannot say they were motivated by jealous malignity of some religious leaders, like at the end of the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of the three years of his ministry. And the house was packed within and the crowd pressed around the doors. So uh, the, nobody can actually enter from the doors because it's packed. Verse 18, then behold, men brought on a bed, on a bed, a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him for the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd. They cannot actually enter from the door. They went up on the house top. And you can imagine carrying the bed with the man on the house top. It was not easy. Uh, 
and let him down with his bed through the tiling. They removed some tiles and they were able to let the man with the bed into the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, faith cannot be seen. But what did he see? Their work. So, as St. James said, show me your faith by your work. So, how the Lord here was able to see their faith? Faith cannot be seen. But when he saw their work, he saw their faith. He said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. So, uh, we read that the power of the Lord was present to heal. Definitely, whenever the Lord Jesus Christ is present, the power of the Lord was present to heal. But sometimes the Lord did not do any miracle. So, there were some time in which there is a great demonstration and reception of God's healing work than other times. Because there were times when Jesus didn't do any miracle because of the general unbelief of the audience. As we read in Matthew chapter 13, verse 58, he did not perform any miracle because their lack of belief. So this man the paralytic man was so weak by the disease, not able to walk, not even to be carried without the bed by any other. So the only way to be carried by his bed. And they sought to bring him through the door, but they were hindered by the crowd. They had great determination. So they removed the tiles of the roof and lowered down their friend into Jesus' presence. This persistency implied faith, faith in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to heal, faith in the man and faith in his friends. Uh, and by the way, this is the first use of the word faith in the Gospel of St. Luke. So the Lord seeing the faith of both the paralytic man and of the men, the Lord spoke this uh, substantial word to give comfort and peace to the suffering, to this sick man. He told him, your sins are forgiven. So maybe the Lord Jesus Christ read what was in the heart of this paralytic man. Maybe this man was distressed by his sins more than his illness. And it's very possible that this illness was brought upon him because of his immoral life. We don't know, but could be. That's why the soul must be healed first, then the body. Or maybe the Lord did not mean that the paralyzed man was especially sinful, or his paralysis was directly caused by sin. But he addressed the greatest need of not this man only, but all of us. The common root of all pain and suffering is sin. Sin is the fountain of all sickness. Forgiveness of sin is the only foundation upon which a recovery from sickness can comfortably be built. So, here the Lord Jesus Christ demonstrates his power on earth to forgive sin. And the healing of sickness was undisputable proof that he had this power to forgive sins. Also, we can see the intercession of the friends on behalf of the paralytic man. 
So we must not neglect active intercession with God on behalf of others. Our faith in God's mercy and grace, like the faith of these friends, can make difference in someone's life. And here the Lord Jesus Christ releases the man from his sins as he heals him. But this generated a negative reaction from the scribes and the Pharisees, as we read in verse 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? So, uh, of course, to the, the answer to their question, who is this man or who can forgive sins but God alone, that Jesus, to answer their question, yes, Jesus indeed is God. And this is a revelation. God became man to heal us not only from physical illness, but mainly to heal the humanity from sin and corruption. They accused him of speaking blasphemies. Blasphemy means abusive or condescending language directed toward God or claiming that a person is God. And according to Levit Leviticus chapter 24, verse 16, blasphemy was punishable by death. And by the way, this was the charge by which the Lord Jesus Christ was condemned during his trial before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, before his crucifixion. Who are the Pharisees and the scribes? Pharisees, the word Pharisee means separated one, because they separated themselves from everything they thought it is unholy or unclean. And also they thought that everyone was, was separated from the love of God except themselves. And they practiced a very strict interpretation and literal interpretation of the law of Moses. The scribes were teachers. They wrote the, the scripture. So they wrote means uh, typed, not the author. Uh, teacher of the law, and many of whom were Pharisees also. And this incident is the beginning of their hostility to the Lord Jesus Christ and his ministry. And this controversy with the Pharisees is mentioned four times in, in, in this chapter, in verse 20, 21, 23, 24, as we will read. They confronted the Lord Jesus Christ three times, challenging the legitimacy of his ministry. And there is no doubt in this passage that in declaring the man's sin are forgiven, that Jesus is claiming divine authority. He is revealing himself as God. Verse 22, but when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk. So, we can see in his answer in verse 22, a fulfillment of the prophecy that Simeon the elder prophesied, and we read it in Luke chapter 2, verse 34. It says, this child, Jesus, when he, they presented him to the temple when he is 40 days old. This child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, fall of the religious leaders and rising of these simple fishermen 
to be fishers of men. And for a sign, the sign of the cross, which will be spoken against, that thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So the Lord knew their thoughts and what they were reasoning in their hearts. Jesus recognized their opposition, not only by their words, but by reading their minds and hearts. And here we can see the Pharisees are in dilemma. How? By forgiving sins, there are two possibilities. Either Jesus is blaspheming as a man who is claiming to be God, or he is speaking the truth and he is revealing himself as the divine redeemer, the Messiah, God who became man. So they chose to accuse Jesus of blasphemy as a blasphemer. Uh, no man can forgive sins and can heal disease like paralysis. Even nowadays, with the advancement in medicine, paralysis is one of the difficult diseases to be completely cured. Uh, but for God, actually, these two things are very easy to forgive sins and to uh, heal person from paralysis. So it is a logical assumption that if Jesus has the power to heal the man's illness, paralysis, then he has authority to forgive his sins. And when he told them which is easier, to, to say to the man, your sins are forgiven, or to tell him, uh, rise up, carry your bed, and walk. There are two ways to understand this question. The first way, it is harder to heal a man than to forgive sins. Because forgiveness is invisible. No one could verify at the moment that this man is forgiven before God. That's why in their heart and their mind they said, any man can say your sins are forgiven. How can we know? Forgiveness is invisible. But there is another way to understand this word. Actually, when the Lord healed this man from his sickness, it did not cause him anything. Just one word from his mouth was able to heal this man immediately. But to be able to say, your sins are forgiven, it cost him a lot. To empty himself, to take the form of man, to obey unto death, the death of the, of the cross, to shed his blood, to suffer. That's why St. Peter said, you were purchased at a price. For healing this man from his illness did not cost the Lord anything. But our sins to be forgiven cost the, the Lord to empty himself, to shed his blood, to be tortured and tormented on our behalf. So when you hear your sins are forgiven, this word has price. So the Lord told them, which is easier for me? It's easier for me to tell him, rise up, carry your bed and walk. But I give him the thing that actually cost me more, cost me my life. I shed my blood to be able to tell him, your sins are forgiven. Also, if he is healed, he will live 60, 50, 100 years, and then he will die. And if his sins are not forgiven, then he will go to the lake of fire. But even if he is not healed, but his sins are forgiven, then he will inherit the kingdom of God. So I give him the most precious gift, forgiveness of sins. But for their doubt, the Lord told them, I, I now innocently, I will verify to you that I have authority to forgive sins on the earth 
by healing this man. So verse 24, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he looked at this man, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. So, Jesus was willing to put himself to the test. In a way, the result would be immediate. Jesus correct the Pharisees' criticism by telling them he does the power, he does have the power and authority to heal and to forgive both. Then he told the man to give the evidence of his spiritual and physical healing, rise up and walk. And this is the first time in St. Luke Gospel, Jesus used the word son of man about himself. Why he used this? Usually son of, son of man means a descendant of Adam, just a human being. But Jesus, use this favorite title for himself to, to express both humanity and divinity. These religious leaders knew very well what's written about the Messiah in Daniel chapter 7 verse 13, he will be called son of man. So he is actually bringing to their mind this prophecy, I am the fulfillment of this prophecy, I am the Messiah. And during his trial, the Lord quote uh, uh, this prophecy from Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. And the Lord used this title, Son of Man, many times during his ministry. It was um, because this title, Son of Man, is a messianic title, free from any political or nationalistic sentiment to claim to be the Messiah in the term they could not easily be attacked. Because if you use the word king or Christ, this actually in the ears of, uh, of the Romans will sound like an earthly king who come to defeat the Romans. That's why he used the word son of man, which actually is one of the title of the Messiah as I explain. And I want you to imagine the tension in this scene. The scribes were tense because Jesus challenged them. And he said he would demonstrate that he is the son of God. The paralyzed man was tense because he wondered whether Jesus would heal him or not. And the crowd were tense also because they sensed the tension of everyone around them. But now, after hearing this word, he immediately rose up. Being enabled to obey this command was the public proof that the man was made whole, not only physically, but spiritually. He now carried the bed which had carried him, and this, the proof of his sickness, became a proof the, the bed, which is a proof of his sickness, by carrying the bed, now the bed became proof of his cure. And Jesus' power to heal and to have authority to forgive sins was immediately vindicated. Everybody glorified God. The healed man was aware that only God could have, have done such wonder. And the same conclusion should have been made by uh, all the people except his enemies, the scribes and the Pharisees. Verse 26 and 27, the last two verses in our Bible study tonight. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen such, uh, we have seen strange things today. 
this actually the last verse. Uh, they were all amazed and they glorified God, but not the Pharisees, not the doctors of the law, but the common people. Amazed to see the power of God in action. Indeed, how strange it was. Almighty God should have become man. Great is the mystery of godliness. God became man, as St. Paul said to Timothy. Uh, now he is concerned with the wretched condition of the flesh and also forgiving the sins of his falling uh, children. Uh, yes, it is the strangest, most wonderful thing that has ever happened. This actually concludes our Bible study tonight. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen, Alleluia, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages, Amen. We proclaim and say, O our Lord Jesus Christ, bless the water of the rivers, may your mercy and peace be a fortress unto your people. Save us and have mercy on us. You have received the grace of Moses, the priesthood of Melchizedek, the old age of Jacob, the long life of Methuselah, the excellent understanding of David, the wisdom of Solomon, and the spirit, the paraclete, who came upon the apostles. May the Lord preserve the life and rising of our honored Father, the Archpriest Pope of Atawadros, and our Father, the Bishop of Yusuf. May the God of heaven come from them on their thrones for many years and peaceful times. May he subdue all of their enemies under their feet speedily. Pray to Christ on our behalf that he may forgive us our sins and peace according to his great mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us, amen, bless me, bless me, lo, the Matania, forgive me, say the blessing. Christ our God, amen, so be it. O King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish for us your peace, forgive us our sins, for yours is the power, glory, blessing, and majesty forever, amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, come here and gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Uh, before his grace, uh, before we all get the blessing from his grace, if you can have a seat just for one minute real quick. So, so this is actually our first Vespers of praying with his grace here at San Mark Church. I don't know for those who remember last year, uh, his grace uh, was 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 uh, delayed at the airport was delayed and he was just sitting in, I think it was in Dallas airport coming uh, to, to pray with us the next morning things have changed a lot since then now the airport's pretty empty now it's easy for his grace to be here so we're so blessed to have Sayedna here with us for our first for Vespers here with us so so f uh, five guys got baptized into the Orthodox Church the week before his grace came to visit us uh, and then all of a sudden COVID-19 came to, to, to visit uh, so <laughs> Satan had to delay his, his, uh, his, him coming to bless us here. So we got uh, Orthodox Study Bibles for those who got baptized recently or over the past year. So if you can come up and, and get a blessing from, from Satan to get your Orthodox Study Bible. Uh, Tucker, where's Tucker? There we go, Tucker. Mr. Jamie. Congratulations.
musicians, guys. The rest of you all will give it to you in person. And we're also blessed to have Father Mina with us. Uh, he's visiting us from Chicago. Uh, he's him uh, in Tanta, I think, is somewhere here. And then Michael, they're here to visit uh, Mr. George Bashara. He's our newest member here at San Mark Church. So for our church family, if you have not already, please introduce yourself to George. Sorry to put you on the spot, George, just to welcome you here to Atlanta. Uh, for the rest of you, please come up and uh, get the blessing from Sedna. Tomorrow morning, we'll begin at 8 a.m. At, uh, the matin service will begin at 8 a.m. For those who signed up, sorry, for those who signed up to have a service, it will be 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. Everything will be broadcasted live online for those who to attend, and also the 8 will be at 12.30 online as well for those who have not signed up. Say it in one bite for those who wanted to say hi. <laughs> 